Doing good, doing good. This is the first client council call um, of the many we will have every monthly. So the agenda for today, and again everything is flexible, um, we wanted everything to be interactive, participative, you have a definite say in the future of the product, where we are taking it and all those stuff. Um, so keep it flexible, uh, keep it interactive, raise your questions. There's no separate Q&A session as we are presenting, as you have questions, stop us or it, it will be a two-way street. Um, about uh, seven customers so far on the client council, 10, uh, uh, ten participants today. Um, only three are there, and uh, I'm hoping that will improve as we go through our calls. So the agenda is Mike is going to present the vision of our nerve center, where we are taking it to, um, what it means, what is that we are looking at. Um, and then followed by Mike, Greg is going to present uh, the roadmap for 2017, which we are marching down again. If there's anything that you want to um, kind of reprioritize, please let us know. And um, we can. We are also planning on all the feedback forum where we get the feedback, we can prioritize those kind of stuff. And then Greg will also uh, present um, is um, the uh, some show and tell what we are looking at and all the stuff and then go from there. So roadmap, what is it for 2017, what is it for 2018, what is it for beyond and nothing is fixed, it's, everything is flexible and uh, you have a definite stay in reprioritizing it and um, if there's something that is missing you can always add. So. Definitely this customer council will have a say. With that, uh, want to, I want to invite Eric to the call. Eric is going, Eric Norton. Thanks, Eric, for joining. Um, I will hand it over to Mike. Mike? Uh, so good morning, everyone. I believe everyone is in a morning time zone. Um, and Mike, oh, Mike, sorry for uh, cutting you in. Uh, Mike is presenting some material on the screen. If you if you can, I would like for you to join on the go to meeting link. What it sent you, so you can see the materials. Regardless, uh, Mike and Greg will be material, presenting materials. After the call, we'll send you the materials um, via email. Go ahead, Mike. So. Okay. So. Essentially, as, as you know, as we go through this and, and have more meetings and discussions, I mean, the, the the overall purpose here is to you know get feedback from everyone um, on on our direction, you know, on specific features, you know, details, but also on our our sort of vision and our our higher level concept of a of a direction. So I'm gonna I'm gonna first talk about um, the things that have that have kind of changed in our in our direction uh, and are currently active and, and are enablers for us to um, to move forward. And then I'm gonna go into sort of where we see nerve center evolving over the you know over the next several years. And again, this is this is our concept, and we're we're kind of looking for, you know, validation to see what everyone else thinks. Are, are we on track? Should we be considering other avenues? Uh, you know, that that sort of thing. So this is this is not like written in stone. This is our vision based on what we're seeing in the industry, based on what we're seeing from customers based on what we're seeing from meetings with, with you know new potential prospects, what people are asking us for, you know, that sort of thing. So let me just kind of jump right in. Um, what we're looking at here, uh, you know, we have a, a new roadmap. We've put that together based on what we've been seeing, what we've been hearing, in some cases what some of you have outright, you know, told us you'd like to see. 
our goal is to obviously internally innovate and, and come up with new thoughts and ideas and features ourselves, but we also want to make sure that we're getting feedback from our user base to tell us, you know, are we headed in the right direction? Are we missing something that is going to be of value to have more, you know, broader applicability across yourselves and the industry? So input from this forum, input from other customers. I mean, essentially, the two major high-level things we're currently working on is making the product easier to use. Now, what that means is going to be defined by Greg. You're going to see some of that in his specific roadmap. But essentially, I mean, I, I put it there as a, as a separate bullet, but it's, it's really kind of a sub-bullet, adding uh, you know, webifying our client is, is one of our very first core things to do. As you, I mean, I don't have to tell anyone here that our our client is, is Windows based, and it and it kind of gives you the impression that it's older version of Windows. Although we do have a uh, a newer implementation of the Windows client available in in 7.1 as that comes out, but still. We want to get to a web-based environment. Now, exactly what the technology will be, um, that, that's you know something Greg can discuss. There's different options. I mean, we've heard HTML5. We've heard you know different um, possibilities. So that's, again, the details is something Greg will talk about. But um, essentially, that's it. We want, we want to make the product easier to use, expand its uh, inputs and its its functionality, and um, and just keep moving down the, the you know the path of um, extending what it can do. On the next slide, I'll talk more about in what that what that direction is. Um, one of the other things we started is a much more active you know account and, and customer management type of uh, uh, approach. This console, or console, is is one of the um, one of those examples. Reaching out to our customers, reaching out to even former customers that have come off of support and are you know potentially still using the product. We're reaching out to them to see where they're at. Um, there, there, are, you know, surprisingly, there are a number of customers still using our product that don't have support, and you know. They're finding that you know that may have been a mistake because they're not able to now take advantage of some of these new things we're <coughs> we're doing. So more news, more updates, <coughs> user tips, user guides. I mean, we used to do the <coughs> the model club uh, webinars from time to time, and that that sort of started to fall off, and we weren't getting. Uh, as much attendance, so that's something we'll be looking for from a feedback standpoint. Is there, you know, were we off topic? Were, were there other areas that, that people wanted to see? Um, updating our documentation is, a, is another big push. We've actually, you know, we've hired a, uh, a stronger team for the documentation. We, we've got some dedicated people now to, um, to really go through and get it uh, fully web-based and searchable and the whole nine yards. Um, so that's another area we've heard that our documentation is lacking. And, and we know that. There, there are some things that haven't been documented very well, and we need to take care of that. We've begun uh, um, offering different support options. We're hearing from uh, prospects, new potential customers, especially medium-sized but in some cases, even larger customers, where they would like a kind of a managed service, meaning uh, maybe it's a hybrid, sort of a, um, a SaaS model, or perhaps just a, 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 a support contract that includes help with you know, model building, for one thing. Um, we're doing a lot more professional and, and consulting services. And I'll I'll touch on that in a bit. I mean, any any thoughts or any feedback? I mean, it's a very high level. You're going to get more details uh, when when Greg uh, 
shows the road map. Um, I'll go ahead and jump into the next piece. So really the, the evolution, right? What we're seeing over the last <clears throat> several years is some of our current users and, and more you know more specifically most of the people that we're talking to from a prospect, you know, new sales uh, concept. Essentially what we're seeing is that the, the NMS, you know, infrastructure management space is immensely crowded. I swear I see another product almost every day. There are all sorts of acronyms out there now for different aspects of monitoring, for one. I mean, there are open source products. There are commercial products. There are just, just huge numbers of different products out there, everything ranging from, from solar winds to you know, CA products, IBM products, and many, many new companies coming out with various products. What we're seeing is when we go into a new customer engagement, we're finding that uh, more and more they're not interested in just the infrastructure layer. They're not interested in basic monitoring. They're not interested in, they're, I mean, it's almost commoditized. They feel like, well, we've got that covered. It's, it's good enough. What we need is some additional analysis at that next layer up. They've already got many of these products in place, in some cases too many, and they're looking for consolidation or they're looking for something that can take input from some of these other systems, maybe augment that with accessing directly to the infrastructure, but basically um, essentially looking for something that is sitting a little bit higher in what you might call the stack of, of tools and functions in the operational environment. So we see that sort of natural evolution for nerve center is to kind of move up that stack, so to speak, to have the ability to correlate across other systems in addition to being able to pull data directly from you know, devices and, and infrastructure. So really, that, that, you know, that is where we're seeing, that is, seems to be what, what the world is kind of looking for. And it's, it is a, a sort of a different space. There are some emerging products in that next layer up that we're starting to see. And it, it doesn't seem quite as crowded as a, uh, of a space. So really, you know, leverage what Nerve Center can do. Leverage its ability to be very smart, very intelligent, to um, do what it does, you know, modeling behavior, building the alarms and the finite state diagrams, but include data from higher level systems that have already made some decisions, that have already perhaps produced what it calls an alert, or in some cases maybe it's still an event. But to take and integrate then with other data sources that maybe are sort of semi-static, referential data, things from CMDB and other operational systems look towards the ability to, you know, automate more, look at um, integrating, I mean, we've done uh, very custom integrations with a number of different upstream and downstream systems at, at other um, customers during services engagement. So we're seeing that need to do automated ticketing um, or automated push to a, an event management system which, which takes it uh, even further. Um, we're looking at automation to update data where a customer has a CMDB, they may want something like Nerve Center to go out and validate things like serial numbers and versions and things of that nature. Um, run book automation seems to be a, a big uh, desire, meaning where some of these other products, these out of the box you know, products like, like maybe SolarWinds, gives you a, an alert that is, that is kind of generic saying that you've got you know, a high resource utilization, maybe CPU or bandwidth, and then the operator has to look that up and perform some manual steps. Well, there are, obviously there's things that Nerve Center can do to automate some of those steps in, in, you know, in some cases. So, so really, moving Nerve Center out of a 
just an S and a P product and being able to expand the inputs and pull in data from other management protocols, various APIs, web services, message bus. I mean, I'm talking about SOAP and RASP and things of that nature. So that's really some of the, the things you're going to see on a roadmap and where you don't see that on a roadmap. That's where sort of this flexible concept comes in where um, we have of our core engineering team, as we've always had, but we've augmented that team with some offshore capabilities that can do some of these quick hit, you know, integrations for us as needed, you know, creating new connectors, things of that nature. So that's, I mean, that's really kind of where we're going, um, kind of moving up the stack and broadening the inputs and the outputs. Um, any. Any comment, any feedback? Does anybody agree with that? Anybody disagree? Well, I, I agree with your approach. I, I have one question about um, <clears throat> how do you guys see network uh, function virtualization impacting Nerve Center? Um, virtualization, um, whether you're talking cloud or actually just um, you know, things like VMware, I mean, there's no doubt that's already there. That's already a, a concern. So uh, looking at some of the APIs into products like VMware, looking at uh, working with some of these cloud providers, that they're, they're beginning to open up uh, their ability to send events and alerts about cloud infrastructure to their customers. So we're going to keep a pulse on that. and. You know, it, it's going to end up being just another data type, data source, but also there's a, an expanded concept of, of logical grouping. And we've already seen where some of the new version or uh, features in, in Nerve Center, specifically the uh, device attributes or the node attributes, has been very useful in dealing with tracking, uh, you know, virtual types of, uh, you know, concepts. Uh, I mean, if you're also referring to things like software-defined networks, honestly, there's a lot of buzz out there. There's a lot of talk about it. I, I read where many, many organizations are implementing this, but it honestly has not hit us from any uh, concern or concept. No one has discussed with us interacting or integrating or in any way, shape, or form, dealing with uh, a network that has um, been, you know, configured with uh, an SDN type of a concept. So, granted, that may be out there. I'm sure it's something we're going to have to adapt to, but we really haven't seen it in any of our current customers or new prospects. So, does that kind of answer, Marcus? Yeah, I mean, I know we're, we're moving towards that, but I didn't think I got any exposure to that. Or ask that question. Uh, uh, Marcus, uh, this is Renga. Uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, to add to what Mike already said, there's, as we see certain demands which we have missed. Any other, any other feedback? Yeah, down the roadmap, we will bring it up. We will jump it up in the priority. That's the whole point of the exercise. In fact, um, as we went through the last two months with some prospect from existing customers, certain um, certain item, like we call it, internal oh, still connectors, on? Can you hear? came up. Hello? I don't think Mike can hear. Yeah. Yeah, hear us. yeah so. Can you hear us, Mike? Uh, yeah, I don't think Mike could hear us. Okay, so yeah. came up, and we have reprioritized that, which um, uh, Greg will cover. Yeah, definitely. That's the whole session, and as interest generates, gets generated, we'll be moving it up. Okay. Okay. Good Thank you. Mike. Mike, uh, you see him there. He might be tr trying to rejoin us there on the audio. Okay. So any other any other while we are meeting on mic have comments about where we are going 
any concerns? Well, I, I like the approach about you know updating the documentation and and having example models like they used to do in the past and stuff like that. Like for me, years ago, and Greg can attest to this. I've, I've known Greg for a very long time, and Mike. I used to have a, a team of like seven, eight people, even sometimes fifteen. Mm -hmm. Today is just me and an offshore component. Yeah. So I don't have the time to to delve in like I used to in the past. So it, it, it would be, as you pointed out, it's great that, that the documentation is being updated and yeah. you know, something that you can easily access for a quick word reference because yeah, with everything on my plate now, it's just hard to remember everything. Yeah, so Marcus, that would you, definitely help. Marcus you will definitely see when Greg presents documentations, yeah. mo library models, and on top of it, what Mike said, we have introduced this um, managed services when typically in your situation, say, for example, you're the only one, you don't have the other staff support, and the managed services component is basically to act as your staff support to make it happen for you so that um, you can be the hero in your environment. And, 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 and again, that's always been the case. Like I said, I've, I've, I've had nothing but huge praise for you guys over the years because, you know, every time we've run into a problem, you guys have always stepped up to help us out. So I, I really greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Mike, are you there? Yeah, I'm back on. I don't know. Okay. But, uh, Go ahead, what, Mike. I, think, uh, so I, was so I don't know what, if I answered Marcus's uh, question all the way or what, but uh, hopefully I, yeah, you did. Did. I don't know you did. Draw. Okay. All right. Yeah, you answered. Thank yeah. you. Well, I've got another roadmap item for us now, too. It's uh, find another web-based uh, meeting product, perhaps. <laughs> Drop down. Um, anyways, uh, any other questions or feedback on the, you know, on the evolution uh, area? Are there any, uh, well, one thing I'd like to hear from everyone or anyone, I guess, is any thoughts or suggestions on specific protocols or integration, you know, uh, types of uh, inputs or outputs that we should be looking at now. Uh, we've, we've heard some things about some new management protocols that people are, have a desire to, to work with. Any, anybody have a, any feedback on that? Okay. Um, yeah, most of our yeah. stuff is, like I said, SNMP based and and and, yeah. and uh, log based. That's the syslog, and there's a couple other yeah. threads that I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but it, it, it escapes me at the moment. But the different types of data are, types. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Right. There are some newer protocols. Um, and some maybe not so new ones that, that we've heard. Some of the web-based, um, you know, the web service-based, like like Webm, um, or we've. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember the name of it, but there's also a sort of a streaming type protocol that's beginning to gain some traction with some of the vendors. Um, I don't know if anyone has worked with that or heard of that. One of the things that I, I'll be quite honest, I'm, I'm a bit baffled about is, is I, I've, you know, over the years it seems more and more people are concerned about management traffic. They don't want to be polling their devices too much. They're concerned about the overhead on the device and on their network. So it seems to me if you've got all your devices suddenly streaming a bunch of data, wouldn't that put more traffic on your network? I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not uh, having yeah, research enough yet, but I'm, I'm just kind of like not getting that whole thing just yet, but I'm a little old school, I'll admit it, so uh, we just haven't really looked at it yet. Mike, just we're doing a quick time check because um, Greg has a lot to cover. How much more time you want? Well, I'm, I'm just getting you know, seeing if anybody has any feedback. We can we can jump into Greg's part at any point. It may spur some more questions and, and feedback. So, you know, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and give you the... 
Okay, Greg is the presenter. There we go. Am I the presenter now? Yeah, you are the presenter, Greg, now. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let me know when my screen appears. Yep. Are there? Yeah, you got it. Okay. All right. That's scary indeed. Well, hello, everybody. Um, so as Mike was saying, as Rango was saying, that uh, you know, our, our goal here is to, um, with your involvement, uh, steer the ship. And we want to you know, get your input on things. I'm going to be providing you with a lot of information over the next two parts of this call. And I don't want you to come away thinking that everything has been written in stone. But when, in fact, what we're doing is we're presenting what we, as a group, um, with some additional input from customers up to this point, and some other people have put together as the way to proceed. But the, the, the point of what we're doing right now is to get your involvement and your feedback. I mean, you are the people using the, using the product. We want this to work for you. So uh, the, we really value what, what your input might be, whether it's right now today, whether it's tomorrow after thinking about it, whether it's next week, whether it's next month when we offer to do all this again. Uh, that really, even though I'm about to hit you with a lot of information, it's to, see, to plant seeds, to show you where we're at, so you have our orientation, but really we want to know your orientation, your thoughts, and your direction. So, um, you know, with all that said, you know, all that was a bit repetitive of what Renga and Mike have been saying, let me venture into all that I have here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to show you is the roadmap as we have constructed it for this year and next. So towards that, I, we have this layout of how we're going to proceed across the year in different directions. And I'm going to give you the summary first, and I'm going to do a little bit of a breakdown in the bits to follow here. So in the, uh, the summary, there's a set of pieces that we're hitting here. Um, there we are. Um, some of the major deliverables that we're aiming for in the near term are that we want to replace the very award-winning but antique client and admin applications on your Windows desktop. We're going to make a web client instead. And have this be available in you know, browsers, have it be mobile aware, so we're using responsive design in our construction so that you're not bound to having to retreat to your favorite Windows desktop in order to access NerveSign. Um, so we're going to be rolling this out in pieces. This is obviously a very large project to do. It is, a, it is intended to be a replacement for what you currently use as your desktop, which is the, you know, the nurse center client and the nurse center administrator. So all that functionality is moving into a web interface. So we're going to bring that piece by piece by piece on a, on a recurring um, you know, basis until we have fully replaced the, those two applications functionality through the web interface. So um, you're going to see in the schedule, this rollout schedule, that occurring is one set of deliverables coming piece by piece across 2017. 2018. The next piece is we want to provide more sample model libraries. Up until now, we've done a great job of hanging on to some very old libraries uh, of, of importable modules, which are good for the training material that we have and to give a basic um, approach to how to use Nerve Center. Um, but something that started last fall is that Tony, who's heading up our customer supports service, revised that whole library of importable models. Uh, we cleaned the closet, threw away some things that were just, you know, yesterday's news. And uh, we have a new organization to that. And you're going to see that with the 7.1 product. And then coming up over the, you know, you know starting in June, we're going to keep on a recurring basis, provide more sample libraries. We're going to pick a topic and build up a set of uh, you know, importable alarms and all the supporting elements, this Perl subroutines, traps, masks, actions, and so on, and provide that so that you can download that and add that into the product. So you know, if you take a topic, whether it's you know, SDN or if it's you know, something more specific to a virtualization and, and so on, you know, 
we, we want to be able to be providing model libraries that are appropriate to interests of how the product can be used. So that's going to be arriving. And this is extremely steerable. And we would love to have input from you as users as to which directions you'd like to see this sampling can, you know, proceed into. So again, really very interested in input on this. Uh, third item here is plugin support. And uh, Mike and Ranga touched upon this already. Um, you know, we want to move the product from its old focus. So when you think about nerve center and you want to pigeonhole it, you would say that nerve center is very good. Well, I'm hoping you'd say it's very good. Nerve center is very good at doing SNMP polling on things that have an IP address. That's really kind of where the product is bent around right now. And we want to move away from that focus. And there's two pieces to that. First is we want to generalize nerve center's ability to, to do finite state modeling, the correlation strength that's in there, and generalize that. And as part of that, keep, of course, keep the SNMP, but make that more as a plugged-in protocol. It's there by default. It's the first one that happens to be a plug-in. But thereafter, make the lower parts of the product support the idea of doing plugins so that you, know, you can take other services or protocols or event streams and have those be inputs or queryable interfaces outbound that Nerve Center can use for doing what it is providing at that more general layer. So this has taken a long time to, to get to the point where we can do this. There's been a lot of bending of the product over years, a lot of it behind the scenes, to be able to get us towards this. But we're ready to embark on this in Q3 2018 is where we're going to you know, be really launching into that, but um, even ahead of time. That's, that's a long, that seems like a long time from now, but ahead of that, if, if you have input on which directions, what protocols, which services, what needs are there that, that you'd like to be able to have Nerve Center latch onto, well, let us know. Um, Greg, and you may want to touch base with the latest decisions what we made based upon various input from prospects and other customers. Like we are, mm -hmm. we are in parallel going to develop all the connectors. Yes, indeed. So we are, you know, we're hearing from a lot of, you know, receiving a lot of inputs. And so, like I said, while this is in front of you, it's not written in stone. So your, your, uh, your input is very valuable for this. Um, <coughs> is our intention to build things out in a, you know, modern method? Uh, a lot of the means that, that the old product communicated with itself was very proprietary and closed and it resulted in Nerve Center being a very closed in product, hard to communicate. It was difficult to get nodes, you know, added to the system. It was difficult to get summaries of what was going on inside the system. It was difficult to know how close was the Nerve Center server to reaching its breaking points and so on. We want to provide an expanding API, RESTful API, that allows um, not just our own um, development to leverage, but it will be an open published API allowing you also with other tools to be able to come, you know, be monitoring or interacting with Nerve Center. So in other words, Nerve Center is moving away from being that semi-closed system that would reach out and branch, I mean, specifically integrate with other tools, with those net tools or the old open views or, you know, you name the tool, um, to make it more of a, you know, a modern approach doing, you know, an API, um, you know, with a published API, so that you know we first are using it, building it up. We're using it ourselves, but then we're allowing you to use it as well. And the last piece here I'll, I'll put in here is a, on the summary is that um, you know it when you know one of the ways that the product in the past has been a little closed is that you know obviously you're, you're all users of the product. It uses Perl internally for you to express your logic. Um, there are several high with that. First off, it doesn't need to be Perl. It can be, you know, Go, it can be Python, it can be Ruby if you want. We want to get to that point where you know, your workings with the logic that you want to insert isn't going to be bound by a decision that we've made. In the case that the original developers, developers of Nerve Center back at Net Labs and then into Seagate, they chose Perl. Back at the point when they made that decision, that made sense. We're now at this point, you know, in time. It makes sense that 
we're, we're going to loosen that up and allow you know, integration with other languages. And towards that, we want to support the IDEs that you would use to be able to do that work. So, for instance, right now, when you are uh, you know, entering a, 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 a poll, you work with that very advanced um, user interface we have to insert your Perl code and edit it and save it and figure out the issues. And we want to allow the product to integrate with the IDE of your choice so that you get not just the, you know, the syntax coloration, but also the help mechanisms and all the you know, abilities of that IDE, whether it's you know, the Komodo or it's uh, um, Eclipse or what, you know, whatever it is that your developers want to use. You know, allow that to happen. And this will then allow you know, runtime debugging, you know, inspection of what's happening, so that you can verify um, your systems while they're um, being developed. OK. I'll stop here for station identification if there's any input in this first bit. OK, so as I said, again, this is a, there's a, like a wall of information here. But this is where we're going this year. But this is our planning. And so again, whether it's right now, tomorrow, next week, next month, you know, please come back with your opinions on things. So now in this you know, hey, Greg, rollout, yes? I had an item. So I'd mentioned this on a previous call. Um, okay. Very interested in making, go back to your previous slide, um, probably have a line that is search oriented including historical. So the uh, alert interface, <clears throat> the alert interface in the Windows environment is, is not, it just doesn't have a lot of search options, uh, filtering options, and we find ourselves also doing a lot of historical logging on transitions. So we're creating a lot of custom logs to have a, uh, a state, state history of a given model so we can go mm -hmm. back and track how it behaves. Um, so, but, uh, you know, people can implement, groups can implement a lot of this stuff uh, on a need basis, but it'd be nice to have some of that uh, search capability, including the historical aspect of the state, uh, the, you know, the alert states available, um, especially in that primary screen. I understand what you're saying because you're, right now we have, you know, in, in that finite state mechanism that you, the, that the product is using, you have these alarm instances, and it, it's there's, it, there's only the sense of what is pr it, the current state, and you can see in the in the present product, you know, the the client that we've all been used to for the past decades is that, and you can see that history. You can click on an interface, I mean, an alarm instance, and you can see the states it's come through. But you can't see the data anymore from those previous states, and the, the history is limited to the past whatever twenty. It is a, it is modifiable, but it's you know very difficult to do. But um, you're right. There's there is that historic data. There's the there's the history of the alarm instance. There's the recording that we went through and returned back to ground. But there's a lot of information that's in there that isn't made available, and we need to break from that you know approach and make that available so that you can, like you said, be able to search on it to find your way back to information that came through the system. Right. We have, like, we record extensively the values that are transitioning the states. We want to know what is actually active beyond just the, the, uh, the bar bind or whatever the trigger is that's caused, you know, whatever the value is that's causing the transition. Mm -hmm. um, because we live in a data world, you know, it's, uh, I, I'm kind of in line <clears throat> on a previous question that people don't like to send a lot of polling and ICMP packets down, you know, customers don't want to see a lot of uh, pinging, quote unquote, pinging on their network, active pinging, and I'm like, really? You know, you're, you're delivering high def video on your network and you're worried about ICMP packets? You know, I, I think that's I, I, that might have been a problem in the late '80s, kind of thing. Um, but uh, so you know, the more data, the better, and the better we can search it. That makes me happy. Okay. All right. Yeah. And just the coverage of how we do, 
you know, what we launch with nodes. But we we run into a problem um, a couple of years ago as those as the current user interface tools really became harder to deal with because the you know they were built using you know methods from Microsoft that are you know archaic now that the 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 pieces that are being done in the back end of the product the server is accumulating data which just isn't visible in that user interface. And you're going to see that come through in the new web-based user interface. When we get to the point of showing details of what's happening with nodes, and up ahead when we do alarms and alarm instances, uh, you're going to find that it, we're, we're able to provide data that is just has been held onto within the server up until now. And part of that will be you know, the, this historical data of you know, what was part of the decision process, you know, as, 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 you, as, the, as your models proceeded from step to step to step, what was the data back then? And we can make that part of the, you know, the user interface so that it's viewable, searchable is a great inclusion so that you can find your way back to data, that, you know, that arrived and, and verify what it was. Yeah, we do that all the time when we have post or like after action reviews. We'll go back and track the life cycle of the uh, the models through our own logging, uh, and and that you know the more detail. Obviously, there's detail that we also access via some of those um, older command line options um, to grab data out of the the state machine. But uh, yeah, anything you can expose like that or expand and expose is, I think, beneficial. Tremendous. Okay. Thank you. All right. We shall do. Hey, Greg. Yes. Um, this, you know, the uh, when you guys were doing the integration with uh, Edge uh, and Portal, there was a table in the database in the MySQL database called alerts. Um, this could be uh, very easy to do uh, by expanding that alerts table. So, for example, it logs to the alerts table on every transition. Um, and uh, anything that is active is bubbled up, and anything that's historical uh, goes gets migrated to a different archive table. But I think the the data is there, um, or the potential is there uh, if you use the alerts table. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Um, I got that written down. Um, so let me again. Let's, let's let's look at 2017. And like I like I've been worrying about this is a wall of information. The next two slides are a, a lot of data, but um, there's there's three main parts to this. Um, and as you look at this, you'll you'll realize that there's three different directions going on here at the same time. There's the regular product incremental, you know, feature buildup. Uh, as you can see, the, the first two line items are that. There's the 7.1 release. Um, there's an immediate addition to that for handling SHA2, which is the new, you know, being adopted authentication protocol set for SNMPv3. Um, and a little farther down in the year, uh, uh, like the what's in what state on in June, uh, is, is another piece of that. The second part is the rollout of this web interface. And you can see that coming down through the year in May, in July, again, you know, further down the year in October and December. So these are the pieces being added to the web interface. So over time, we're, you know, not replicating the user interface from client and admin. We're bringing over the functionality and re and re-implementing it. What I want to suggest by that and have you understand is that we're not doing a page by page replacement. That we're taking the spirit of the functionality of what was in the client and the admin and we're going to be providing them into a web interface. So for as much as the old client and admin are cherished for their um, sort of difficult to use user, user interface, we want to leave that behind and provide a user-friendly, you know, uh, approachable means of looking at uh, the nerve center system, what's its status, what is its inventory? What are its assets that you've added? Um, and how is it performing? And so, the the view 
that you get will be on a, on a different approach, very fortunately, than the old client and admin, which were not based around anything of what we would consider today by normal user experience uh, uh, based means of constructing a user interface. So the old user interface and its arcane means of having to use it and move around within it are, I trust, going to go away. And we're going to provide a, a new method uh, which was going to be, you know, our, from the onset, we want it to be user-friendly, user approachable, and to be oriented towards providing the functionality that, you know, the features that you need to use the product. And the third part of this, then, is also what I mentioned earlier, is the uh, is these sample alarm libraries. And you can see uh, these two of them here, uh, at June and then uh, later on, uh, that we're going to be providing these library samples to you know show nurse center being used in different contexts sure but also to show how nurse center can be used at a more general level you know what is our idea of a good practice how's approach doing something um, and uh, so these samples are meant to you know provide usage you know ideas and to sh you know just to show how to use the product and what makes it valuable so that brings us across 2017 all these items and there's quite a few. Um, as, as Renga has said, we're, we'll be providing all of this um, afterwards in material. So, um, uh, so you can go over that as well. Uh, in 2018, we move along with more samples and more additions to the web user interface. We're getting, and then finally, when we get to the end of the year 2018, we're talking about August out there, we're getting into providing, you know, wizards and means of providing the ability so that you can go about the construction elements of Nerve Center, which are difficult to be able to have that not necessarily involve Perl and Python and so on, but you know, it have the tool work easier for you than having to bring in a journeyman who understands, you know, a scripting language. Uh, Greg, I have mm -hmm. a question yes. for you uh, on the previous slide. Yes. Uh, this item where you have uh, uh, May 2017, the web interface uh, portion. Yes. Uh, in here, can you add one more item? Like, for example, let's say we have a network diagram that is in Visio. Um, if we can just export that or some kind of integration with Visio or something that can display a network picture. or whatever the Visio diagram. Basically export from Visio, import to the web front end, and just display that as one of the widgets. Okay, so you're looking for a way to, you know, are you interested in the map, or you're interested in the contents, being able to it's uh, initially, I, in the long run, I would love to have the content. Basically, if alarm, then red light, green light. Um, basically, what sells a lot of these uh, uh, monitoring products is the visualization aspect of it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and having a map, um, there's no nothing more powerful than just having a map visualization of the either the network, the server, whatever. Um, or even a cabinet or a data center, uh, just having those images, even even certain images uh, that people can scroll through um, in a tabbed manner, uh, that would be very helpful. Okay. Have, now, have you been using the the Edge inter interface? Please? I I haven't. I know. I know Edge uh, has the widgets, but I haven't used it enough to speak intelligently. Okay, all right. I brought in the lab, but didn't dive as much uh, into it. Again, time and resources. Yeah, th this is Mike again. The the yeah, the Edge product has a, a number of options for you know visualization of the data, and certainly there are several options for you know geographical mapping and being able to uh, deal with you know geographic locations and sort of that situational situational awareness view. Um, as far as actual detailed topology mapping, it, it doesn't really do that. Um, it, th I mean, that would probably be another partnership opportunity from our standpoint 
there are uh, some products out there kind of up and coming that, um, that kind of do that for a living and that, that's kind of where we're thinking that would make more sense instead of us spending a bunch of time figuring out how to render topology maps, let's partner with somebody that does that and we can kind of share data back and forth maybe. But, you know, we'll, we'll see, but I, I definitely, if you're just looking for a geographic map from a, a, a situational awareness kind of a concept, or even different kinds of uh, charts or, or status views, uh, those are, you know, look quite nice in the, uh, the edge uh, integration. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. Um, let me change direction here a little bit and show you, um, I can branch down to show you where we're at with the user interface, for instance. Um, or bring it, should I show what's farther up ahead in ideas for the future? Um, do you want to tickle interest with that? Uh, where are we talking about? What, what I would say, Greg, is just go through uh, at high level um, the beyond features, you said the concrete release plans now, which could be tweaked based upon customers' further expectations, then also present the other things which are in the backlog. So our customers will have an idea of what is that we are considering. So they don't, they don't, we don't want them to leave with why they are not considering all these things. So you have time. Um, after that, then you can show the show and tell of what is that you want to show as. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. So let's proceed a little further down in here then um, and look at this. So we have a, a good backlog of items that we are interested in looking at nursing or providing. And, um, you know, a lot of this, the, the orientation of this, the, uh, the mapping of this, uh, be based upon your input on what, what you see as valuable because uh, there's quite a few things here. Uh, this goes on for, I think there's three pages of this. So there are many ways that the product can be, you know, enhanced across time as we get into the longer term. That, um, you know, we're talking about high availability, you know, is, is, is of interest of some people. Um, advanced discovery abilities is of interest to some. Uh, Multi-tenancy for uh, service providers. Uh, there are many different users of this product and they each have their own interests, but uh, um, we want to be able to provide a product that is increasingly open, uh, you know, applicable to the environment that you want to use it in, both in that more generalized, you know, um, correlation and uh, finite state, you know, alarm modeling, uh, that approach that NerveCenter provides that no other products seem to provide very well. We want to provide that as a useful means for you at a more generalized level and then be able to have at the lower level um, the ability to be able to have it, you know, provide that data to you through increasing means other than where it's just wrapped around right now with uh, SNMP, a little bit of IC, ICMP. Okay, so there's no set of pieces here where, um, where you know, you know just take the concept of a state. We said, you know, there's right now the the alarm states um, are the progressions that you make through the the, the alarm models that, that are created right now in the product. But each state in itself, um, you know, contains a number of it potentially uh, a lot of value. Whereas right now in the alarm diagrams, they they're just sort of landing points. Um, there's the idea that you could have ingress actions and egress actions. Um, you could have multiple final states, for instance. Um, there's just the, the representation on the screen that uh, you know, it doesn't have to be an octagon. It could be you know, a selectable item. We, we could make the whole state alarm model 3D, as uh, shown down there on the next to last line, where you know, for you could say build an alarm model wherein it's more complicated than the, than the two-dimensional approach that's supported right now in the old product. That uh, you, know, you could have a plane within that 3D model, which is the regular monitoring. And then you could have, you know, subsequent planes, you know, three-dimensionally think about it as, you know, for alarm states where you're at a certain point on your first plane, but you realize something's, you know, 
not correct. And so as opposed to trying to squeeze it all into a two-dimensional view, you know, the, you know, the alarm modeling could be done at a three-dimensional level so that, you know, you can have depth to it. To, in depth could be shown to use a variety of things. We're here I'm suggesting that it could be used first off as a means of showing severity of, uh, you know, interest. Or once an alert is posted off to your network management system or a knock, then you move to another level three-dimensional. And so on. There's, there's different ways, of course, to use a three-dimensional approach, but this is just one idea of how to do it. Um, so there, there are a, a, a number of things coming up. The, here's, here's a third page of the same where um, there's many different ways that the product can be enhanced in the future. And we're excited to a lot of these um, and provide them to you. Uh, a lot of these have come from customer input. And now we're you know, funded with uh, uh, some more monies and resources. You know, now's, now's when we want to get into you know, watching into some of these. Uh, take the last item there, for instance, that uh, right now it's, it is a difficulty with the product that uh, you have in the back end, uh, you, know, a, you know, a set of old style flat files that hold on to the data that you've entered, the assets and the inventory. You know, it, this can be, you know, checkpointed, you know, broken out into multiple files and, you know, made so that you bring in a source control system or perhaps we, you know, provide one of some of these uh, source control systems so that, um, that, so that you can you know, checkpoint your progress and you can you know, commit changes to light or you know, roll back, roll forward, you know, move a, uh, a developed alarm system in ways that just aren't in the product now from one system to another. So that um, you know, the work that's put into a nerve center system is less closed into that one nerve center system. And again, we're breaking away from that, you know, method in the past where you know, the, the product was developed in sort of a closed in manner. We want to make it open at many different levels, accessible and uh, modern. So, you know, uh, here we're, you know, we're proposing using, just to stick with this one line, you know, we're proposing using, you know, the common tools that are used for, you know, you know, uh, recording and holding on to changes to source control and treating, you know, your, the assets that you the assets that you put into Nerf Center, the poles and the alarm models and everything as assets that you can check in and then be able to, you know, mark, uh, tag, and be able to, uh, you know, recover, move forward, move back through, branch, and so on. So I'm going to leave you with this as part of the materials you're going to receive afterwards. It's like you're going away present. But um, feel free to come through this and I'm really interested, we're all very interested to hear your input, you know, over the coming days, weeks, month, next month, the month following that, for instance, on items. If you have other ideas, we're willing to, you know, take them in as well and add them to all, to all of this. Um, but the point of all this is to get your interest and to find what is the directions that make sense to you as you think about it. Where would you like this product to grow? Okay, so I'm going to switch over to looking at the, the user interface at this point. This is um, a good moment. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. Why are we there? Okay, what have I got here? Um, I can show off the 7.1 product real quick here. Um, if I can get to the lock screen. I might not be able to. Come on, let me do it. There we are. Uh, this is the 7.1 product, which is in test right now. Um, I have it here running on a CentOS 6 system. Uh, it runs on CentOS 6 and 7, right? Uh, you know, um, 6 and 7 as well. Um, and in here, what the accomplishment of this version of the product is that the 7.1 product is functionally the equivalent of the 7.0. Uh, which is functionally the equivalent of the 6.2, but with some very interesting changes that have come through. Uh, this LDD uh, of the NC server binary, what I'm wanting to show you this for is because this is showing off that it's um, assembled only with 64-bit libraries. This is a 64-bit version of the server product, uh, whereas anything we've done up to until now has only been 32-bit for the server part. Um, in this 6.2 and 7.0 releases, we've been increasingly 
64-bit with the different components that run on the server side. But with a 7.1 product, it is all 64-bit, both the front end and the back end. And so we're leaving the 32-bit world behind. Any questions on that? Hello? That makes me happy, Greg. Okay, all right. I'm so quiet here. I was worried I uh, <laughs> lost the call. You know, I was really worried that I lost the call. All right, so let me jump into my other one. Uh, so let me jump into the user interface. Um, I'm going to show you this very quickly, but then I'm going to play with it live, I believe. that. Uh, uh, you know, the web interface is um, going to be a, a, a component. You know, this, is, this, this will be increasingly the way to, to access the product coming up. Um, and if the, during the course this year, we're going to be, as you saw on that roadmap, we're going to be providing this um, in, in, incrementally that's going to cover more and more the functionality of what has been in the old client and the admin. So we're not necessarily going to do it. This will only work with the 7.x products? This is going to work, yeah, this is, this is, this requires augmenting the, um, the server and other components within, you know, the, the Nerve Center server system to be able to talk outwards through a web architecture out to your web browsers and devices. So, yes, the, because of that, this is going to be part of the 7.1 product, the 64-bit product. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So, you know, we're, it's, it starts with the ability to log in. What I want to point out here are several things. We're going to make this a, a product that is secure. Even though you're logging in over the web, it's going to be a secure product, much the same as when we, you know, log on to secure services across the internet or intranets that are, in, you know, uh, corporate environments. We're going to, this is going to be a product that we're going to allow to be international from the start. Uh, having been involved in products before where we try to add internationalization later, we're just going to begin with that. So um, we're going to uh, at, you know, provide that from the beginning. It might not be very broad to start off with, but we want to be implementing the product to allow for that, to, you know, to include that. The help is included from the start where we're going to be, um, uh, uh, you know, providing a help system that is, you know, topic specific um, and searchable on the context of where you are in the product right now. And this is, again, a change from how the product was done originally. Back when the product was first developed and then maintained across its many years, it is uh, the, it, an older style documentation, you could say. Now that's that difference, but it, the, the orientation is book-heavy, um, uh, procedural in a way that is a little insensitive to um, where you are in, within the product trying to use it and for what purpose. Whereas a topic-centered approach to help is more, well, we've, we've seen this now with modern help systems, where, where you, the, the, the help mechanism that's available to you is ready to work with uh, keywords within the context of where you presently are at and allows you to flow uh, within the, the help system along the topics that you're interested in. So you don't end up having to page through you know, other material that's inappropriate to what you're looking at. Uh, so that's my end. So we've got the internationalization coming through. Um, another piece that we're throwing in is the ability to optionally allow for that uh, click-through that uh, some of our customers need. That when logging into a system, there's there's the request to be able to verify that um, you, you know you're using a resource of the company. You know we need you to understand that this is important, and uh, only the appropriate party should be in here. Uh, hey, Craig, step. quick question. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so will, will the web be the only access the way to client in, or the, the, the desktop Windows client is going away? Well, the, the Windows-based desktop potentially goes away at the point when this is the full replacement. Up until then, the desktop applications must remain because we cannot lose that functionality until this one has completely replaced it. Yet at that right. point, Yet at that point, there may still be a need for tools. You know, I, I believe that there still will be a need for tools that can directly access the product without having to go through the web. So yeah. there, so while uh, the old client and admin will eventually be replaced and can probably be taken away, I do not believe that the web will become the only way that you interact with the server product. Okay. Thank you. So. Mm -hmm. 
So in our first target for the web interface, we're, we want to get to the node list. We want to allow you to see that inventory, your managed inventory of what you've added into the product. We're starting with that component. And so towards that, what we have looks like the original node list from the client. Yes, I agree. And even though I just told you that we're not going to repeat necessarily the way that, you know, um, the way the old product works, here is a case where, you know, we're, we're still dealing with a list of information, and so this is, this kind of, it looks like the old product. Um, but, you know, a lot of it starts to break pretty quickly once we get into this. You know, as we deal with the 64-bit product, the first thing that we expect to be different in your handling of the 7.1 product and the 64-bit nature of it is it's going to be allowed for the large memory model. The 32-bit product, architecturally, as with any 32-bit product, can only grow so large, you know, in memory. The 4 gig is the limit for the addressable space of a 32-bit application. And once we've broken that mold and we've gone into the 64-bit world, it, it, our first expectation is that it, it, the, the weight that, that will be put placed on the nurse and her server is going to increase. And it's going to increase first in the area of what managed inventory are, do, do you have it looking at. And so uh, the, the noblest we expect to expand first, that this is going to be something that the product is going to be asked to do more of, you know, more management, of, you know, here's your alarm asset set, um, go manage an additional set of nodes. So we expect you know, node lists to become much larger than they are today. You know, towards that, the node list be, needs to be uh, something that is um, you know, searchable, filterable, uh, import exportable in a way that you know, allows it to be um, you know, you know, dynamic to your needs. It, that, that you want to be able to add and remove things, find things that are in here, but yet realize that this is going to be a tremendous set potentially. Uh, we have customers who are, you know, at present struggle with, you know, 17,000, 23,000 nodes in their node list. Um, we expect that number to go even higher. So towards that, we, we're going to provide a means of, of having it so that, you know, you can filter a property group, you can filter on severity, you can filter on, you know, customizations that we're going to allow you to create. So, hey, Greg? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you guys introduced a couple of other uh, custom attributes. Um, are they in the background or is, are, can we add more columns to this uh, view for nodes? Yes, yeah, this is just showing um, the, the basic interface, if I jump to it actually, um, if I jump to the real version of it, um, so here we are, I mean, is this up on your screens? Can you see the login screen? Yes, no? Yes. Okay, all right, so, um, so in here, when you come into the main screen, um, oops, I have to type the password in correctly. The, um, We're going to have the ability that you can add and remove columns in here. And um, you're going to be able to, once you can open notes and look at them, you'll be able to see the attributes. But the column selections that are in here will be settable by you. So yes, if you have, there, there, there will be this ability that if you have a column of interest, because you've added it, um, then you know, we can you know, uh, have, have it be selectable in here so it becomes a column that is shown on user interface. So the, um, but right now the, you know, in, a, in, in, in what has been done so far, here, here the, uh, the engine ID column has been left out. But uh, the, the intention is that this set of columns that is shown on the user interface will be some, something that, that you can select and manipulate. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, and what has been done already is a is is pretty amazing. It's very powerful. It's just a, it, it's, it's it's been a very exciting process for me to see this come about very quickly. And really, uh, uh, my appreciation to the team that's been putting this together. Uh, um, what we have here, this is this is the live system showing you the uh, you know a. a, a a web interface that's sitting here looking at a node list of nearly 9,000 nodes. 
And unlike the current product, which architecturally is bogged down, the, the old desktop client is bogged down in the sense that when it comes up, when the client comes up, it downloads all of its all of the assets and inventory come at the client and it loads. And it, you can see that load time take a while. Either when you're working over a VPN or if it's just simply a large amount of data has to come to the client, it takes a long time for it to come up. This is a, a different approach where you're attaching to a web service with your with your browser and you are able to quickly move to dealing with the system because it's not downloading a huge information to your web browser. That would be ridiculous. It's 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 using the the means of the you know, the abilities of the web browser to do the presentation layer and the, uh, the the inventory, the assets are brought, you know, to your uh, you know, web browser display as appropriate. So that is in contrast then to the old product where everything was downloaded into the client and then uh, and then you know brought up and with the server feeding a constant stream of updates to the client, each each attached client as to what was happening on the server to keep everybody in sync. Uh, that architecture was not scalable at all. Um, particularly now we're talking about you know moving into many more thousands of nodes and node lists and so on. All right, um, I've, I've sort of jumped into this in a, an odd way, but um, you know, so what we're showing here is, 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 the, is, is the current node list of the product. Um, the columns are selectable, they're, search, they're, they're sortable, they'll be searchable. Um, as you can see here on this screen that this is a collection of about uh, just short of 9,000 nodes. And if I click on a property group, for instance, it filters that down to me. You know, it filters that down for me. And then with that as the primary selection, I can continue to narrow it down if I want to say um, 161, 152. And I want to filter that list down even farther. Now I'm getting, so I'm being able to uh, you know, filter that node list down. Again, uh, the, the interest is being able to be able to control what will be expected to be a larger inventory and to be able to see what is in the system and as the product grows its functionality here, you'll be able to step into the nodes and see how they're doing, their performance, their configuration, poke at them as you can now in the full product with the web browser and be able to do pings and so on. Um, but then also have the nodes be able to support additional, uh, you know, re reporting as, as in, in the future. Right. We've also talked about how, um, you know, in the you know, whereas the old product is so strongly bent around looking at things using SNMP, where those things have to have an IP address. In the future, this managed inventory at the top level tag. That's a very intentional naming. That in the managed inventory is not necessarily to imply nodes. In the short term for the product, yes, it's a node list because that's what the product presently does. But in the longer term view of where we want to take Nerve Center, you know, the managed inventory should not be con, con, you know, pigeonholed to be or constrained to be the idea of a node list anymore. It could be services. It can be other manageable elements out there in the world. Um, and, you know, again, it's part of that generalization of the value of Nerve Center. We want to get away from its bent around looking at, you know, SNMP things with IP addresses. Uh, so at the moment, for the short term, it has still has that little bit of approach, but uh, uh, the longer term is that that managed inventory, that name is very intentionally set that way, so that um, you know it it, it, it it can become services or environments or um, you know bank accounts and so on. So that we're, we want to move away from you know the current orientation over the long term. Okay. Um, so what I'm able to show you so far is that this, this, that there's this, um, the node list is handling. This is this is coming in the May time frame, you know, May first, and then in this, in the, then further throughout the year, we're, we're providing additional pieces to this. But this will be the, uh, uh, the first part. Another piece over here I can show you quickly is that uh, in addition to language selection, that uh, you know, for instance, we've been looking at you know the the timeout uh, for the session. There's the potential to make it infinite if you just want to have it up on a screen somewhere and it's permanently displayed. That there's a way to set that, or if you're 
more typical usage may be that you want to allow it to time out if you are not at your desk anymore. Um, so there's you know there's thoughts along that lines, those lines. And as I said we're doing everything you know from the start international you know why so that um, there's um, we, we want to include this from the beginning so so it's not attempted to be backwards shoehorn back into the existing product. We want to begin from the beginning. So uh, we had picked German as an alternative to start off with so that you know, we were aware that, uh, it, that this, you know, forcing ourselves to recognize this fully. So if it's in, you know, you know if it be, if it's something again, you know, we try to put in later, it's, it's going to be, you know, that much more difficult to do. But, you know, so from the start, the help will be context sensitive and, uh, you know, we're trying to provide a product that is going to be flexible, growable in the future, uh, and not become, you know, the archaic thing that, uh, that our desktop applications have become. Any thoughts or feedback on this? Looking good, uh, man. It's great. And, and again, your feedback is welcome, whether it's today, tomorrow, next week, next month. Um, you'll be seeing more of this when we do this again in a month. If you come back or if you're in the session two months from now or three months from now, you'll see, you know, growth of this. Remember what you're seeing now. Again, we're, we'll, we'll send you home with the, uh, with the, uh, with the, the slide decks that you've seen today so that you can look at this. But in the, in the months ahead, you're going to see this grow. And, uh, we're, and as, as has been said several times, we're very interested in your feedback. Um, um, to help us with the direction of this, because you are, you in the end are the users, and uh, we, we want to make the product valuable to you. That is our goal. Any questions for Greg? So, um, what we'll do is we will send out the minutes of this meeting and the materials to all of you, all of the customer council members, and we expect your feedback. The next meeting next month, fourth Wednesday of every month, we'll start off with the feedback and what actions we have taken, and we'll go from there. And I thank you all for coming to this meeting. If, if you have any feedback, you can always reach out to us via email. And... Uh, um, if you, if, and we will make sure it is answered. Any other questions for me or, in, or feedback for me? None from me. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, guys.